All right, most of you awake on a Wednesday night, okay. I love snow, so I've got my share. We went skiing on Monday. I, I go skiing yet, okay? And I do it to keep in shape so I can teach my grandchildren how to ski, okay? And uh, we had snow all the way there and all the way back, and uh, we had all, snow all the way here today, I believe. So uh, anyhow, I like snow, so I hope you do. But uh, it is a privilege to be back. Who has never heard us sing before? Would you raise your hand, please? Okay, so most of you were here the last time. Well, we uh, counted a privilege to be here tonight. We're on a, on a tour. Uh, this is actually our first stop. We're going to practice on you all tonight. I just thought I'd let you know that. And uh, we'll be in 12 different prisons here in the next few weeks in Alabama and South Carolina and Florida. And so... Uh, we uh, would appreciate your prayers in the coming days if God brings us to your mind. It's probably because we are in a stressful situation somewhere. When uh, Monday night, we will be in Holman Prison in, in Alabama. We were there in 2011. And uh, that is the third most dangerous prison in the U.S. as of a few years ago, meaning the most stabbings and murders and whatever that happens in prison. And so that's where we'll be on Monday night. But you know, the best place to be is in the center of God's will. And that's, yeah, so I look forward to being there. There's, there's a church there. I remember preaching there, and uh, I would start quoting a verse, or reading a verse. And there was this black guy in the back, the chapel was half the size of this. And as soon as I would start it, he would be back there finishing it for me. It kind of got me mixed up a little bit. But anyhow, there's some brothers in Christ that uh, have found the Lord Jesus Christ in prison, and we have a privilege to go and minister and encourage the saints there. We're going to start out with a song that talks about traveling miles. If we could just bow and ask God's blessing on our service here tonight. Heavenly Father, thank you for life. Thank you for safety on the highway today, Lord. And Lord, thank you for your spirit that is here with us tonight. And we ask that uh, you would just anoint our lips and our minds from the travel and the stress today to calm our spirits that we could minister and glorify you. Lord, thank you for each one that is here. And you know each one in the journey that each of us are on. And maybe there's somebody in a valley here tonight. And Lord, we ask you by the power of your spirit to lift them up to meet their need. Lord, we know we have an enemy that is out to steal, kill, and destroy. We ask you to bind and rebuke the principalities and the powers of darkness, that your purposes would be accomplished tonight. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. It's been worth every mile. There's been many a trials I face since I started on this race. There's been times it seems no hope was inside. There's been times that the valley seems so long, dark, and cold. But my Lord has been with me step of the way. It's been worth every mile. It's been worth every trial. It's been worth every valley that we it's been worth everything that we face in His dear name. It'll be worth it all when we see His face. There's been many a friends I've had since I started. It's been worth every mile, it's been worth every trial, it's been worth every valley that we cross. It's been worth everything that we face in His dear name, it'll be worth it all when we see His face. It'll be worth it all when we see His face.
Amen. We need reminded of that sometimes. It'll be worth it all. We have many times as we leave a prison, and usually I try to get to the back and shake all the guys' hands as they leave, and a lot of times there's tears back there, and they just thank and so appreciate that somebody would come to them. And it's those, the, <laughs> those scenes that keep us going many times. I remember one time um, we hadn't been on the road for a month or so, and I actually had this very realistic dream uh, and I was at the back of a prison and in tears uh, just shaking these guys hands as they were leaving and so that has just a, been something that has been dear to my heart to uh, to see these guys and know that one day we have the privilege to all have a grand reunion on the other side beyond the rain When the sky is getting dark And the clouds are moving in When the storms of life fill our hearts with pain Just let our Savior in For when we trust in Him He will lead us beyond the rain Beyond the rain, there'll be no more dying, no more crying, no more pain. When we put our lives in the hands of Jesus, He will lead us beyond the rain. Live our lives alone Try to make it on our own Still the heartache Emptiness remain If we hold on to God's hand He will lead us to a land Where the sun will always shine Beyond the rain His only Son to fulfill the promise of His name. If only we believe, oh what a gift you will receive to live with Jesus beyond the rain. Beyond the rain, there'll be no more dying. No more crying, no more pain When we put our lives in the hands of Jesus He will lead us beyond the rain Beyond the rain, there'll be no more dying no more crying, no more pain When we put our lives in the hands of Jesus He will lead us beyond the rain Amen. I, I assume I see a lot of young people here, and this is great, okay? We get into some places, and I'm like, wow, there are three funerals from closing the doors. But uh, this is great. And probably a lot of you are from the school, I assume. I don't know. Raise your hand if you're attending uh, where Jerry's a teacher over here. Jerry's my cousin, okay? Raise it high. You act like you're ashamed. Okay, get it up there. 
All right, great. Well, um, you know, I was at your age one time, okay, back a few years ago. Jerry and I grew up together. We actually sang in a quartet for a little time, and uh, anyhow, but uh, I thank God for life, and I just want to encourage you all to serve God and think about the choices that we make. That's what our life really is made up of, is choices that we make. And it's so important to seek God in the choices. This next song, uh, We Need You, Dear, um, it's called Someone Made the Sandals Jesus Wore. Oh, you don't sing on this? Okay, I'm sorry. Anyhow, and uh, I think it's just the way God planned. If you look in Scripture, a lot of what's recorded happened outside of the church walls. And I think many times we uh, find it hard to, to do what we ought to be doing on the outside. You know, we show up at church, and you need to do that. However, uh, the work of the church really goes on outside those walls, and that's kind of what this song tells us about it. Just a little snapshot into our lives as a family. Uh, the young people here, I, uh, I had an airplane when we got married, my wife and I, and I was going to be a missionary pilot. And anyhow, that, that whole idea never got off the ground, okay? Uh, but anyhow, uh, God had a different plan. And uh, we, you know, we had a child and then another one and, and you know, we had nine of them. And, well, I'd have to have a DC-3 almost to get, it all, get that crew off the ground. And so, but God had a different plan. And uh, we'll do an introduction later. But anyhow, I just... God's will comes wrapped in a package many times that we don't recognize. But we just had a desire to minister. We thought it would be on a foreign field, but there's so much to do right around home and right around the U.S. But we started something about 20 years ago. I think this coming year will be a 20th one. Um, around the holiday time, we have a banquet. The only people that get an invitation are widows. And there's a lot of widows we have met at Walmart and Kmart and all the other marts, okay? And we fill, we clean our garage. And a good thing is the garage gets cleaned once a year, whether it needs it or not, okay? And uh, we have, we, this last, last uh, um, time, almost 70 widows showed up. And there's Catholics, JWs, Amish, Mennonite, Methodist, you name it. And it's a way we've taken the gospel outside of the four ch walls of the church. And it's been a wonderful, and we've done, been doing it for about 20 years. And some of the widows say it's the, their favorite thing all year long. And I'm like, man, you must not have much of a life. But anyhow, anyhow I'm, just, I wanna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give some ideas tonight. And maybe some of you all could do some things to take the church outside and make sandals for Jesus. And someone made the sandals Jesus wore. They made them so his feet would not get sore. Do what you can do and he will never ask for more. You know, someone made the sandals Jesus wore. God made the earth, the heavens, and the seas. He left some little jobs for you and me. And some will build the churches and some will sweep the floors. You know, someone made the sandals Jesus wore. For something we can do Big or small It's up to me and you You can tend the sick And you can help to feed the poor You know someone made The sandals Jesus wore
you can work to make the bad things right. Light one little candle in the night. Maybe you can lead a mighty army for the Lord. You know, someone made the sandals Jesus wore. Someone made the sandals Jesus wore. They made them so his feet would not get sore. Do what you can do and he will never ask for more. You know, someone made the sandals Jesus wore. All right, so you all keep making sandals for Jesus, okay? This next story, next story, next song uh, has a story, okay? Um, and it's usually my story, an abbreviated one. Uh, I was born back in 1958, and we did not write on slate back there, by the way, for young people, okay? We did have ink pens. <clears throat> I'm so thankful that I'm here tonight. Because uh, as soon as I was born, I was given up for adoption, raised by Earl and Thelma Glick in Maslin, Ohio. Earl is a brother to Jim, and Jim is Jerry's dad, okay? And then Albert is another of the brothers, okay? And Albert is the father of my wife. We live close enough to West Virginia, I could marry my first cousin. I thought I'd let you know that, okay? <laughs> I told people back then, I said, at least I know we're not related, okay? You know, there's people, there's people out there, I don't know, I might be related to somebody else. But anyhow, I thank God. God has a sense of humor, okay? And for many years, as I grew up as a child, I was embarrassed and ashamed that I was adopted. I didn't want anybody to know that. And uh, anyhow, I'm uh, so thankful for my parents and the blessing that they have been about uh, 20, 23 years ago or whatever. Uh, did some investigating. I wanted to find out who my mother was. I wanted to thank her for not making the choice that nearly 4,000 women made today to terminate a pregnancy, to murder a life. That happens in America every day. What happened on 9-11 happens every day in abortion clinics all over this country. I'm thankful that my mom didn't make that choice because I was born into a single parent situation. My mom and dad were not married and, and it was a bad thing. And I found out who my mom was, but uh, she had passed away 10 years earlier. So I didn't get to thank her for allowing me to be born. And uh, six months, uh, I, I found out who my dad was six months uh, after he had passed away. So I never got to meet my parents but uh, met most all of my relatives. It was just to a cousin's funeral just recently, and he would have been on my mom's side. And uh, my mother's side of the family were not church-going people at all. And as I looked in that, wa walked in that funeral home and saw, here's a bunch of my relatives, cousins, aunts, uncles, and uh, just a godless group of people, I thought, wow. Where would I be had it not been for the grace of God and a praying father and mother? So uh, as you look up here and see our family, it's just a product of God's grace and somebody that was willing to take a little boy that didn't have a home and give him a home and try to train him. I feel sorry for my parents, but I thank them every time I see them for taking me in and investing into my life. Thank you, Mama, for praying for me. Somebody somewhere was praying that night When Jesus came in and I saw the light It must have been Mama I heard her before As she knelt by her bedside Her tears touched the floor Thank you Mama for praying As your tears touch the floor She 
held to the altar and wouldn't give in till she knew all her children had been born again. Just an old-fashioned mama, but she loved the Lord, and her prayers touched the Master as her tears touched the floor. Thank you, Mama, for praying for me. If you had not prayed, then where would I be? They call you old-fashioned, but you love the Lord. And your prayers touch the Master as your tears touch the floor. Yes, your prayers touch the Master as your tears touch the floor. Amen. Thank you, Mama, for praying for me. We were down in Huttonsville Prison um, over close to Thanksgiving. We go down there every, every Thanksgiving time, and the ladies make a few cookies, and we put them in little packets, and they allow us to take them in for all the inmates. There's about 1,200 inmates, and they each get four cookies, so you can do the math on that. That's a lot of cookies that come out of our kitchen, and I have to inspect and sample, you know, periodically to make sure the quality control's up there. So anyhow, I'm still trying to recover from that, but uh, we have a wonderful time every year and we've learned to know a lot of the guys there and what a blessing and you know places like that about 80 percent of our audience were not raised by their natural parents and uh, i've just noticed i remember we was at a, a at a ladies facility one time it was a bunch of juvenile girls that's the toughest audience to minister to and we were there and they were eating they were coming in and there was circ round tables and they were coming in and sitting and we were you know, having a service like this, that's what worked in their schedule. And I noticed this gal, she came in and she took one look at us and she went to the farthest table she could find and sat facing the wall against us. Obviously, she wasn't interested in what we were there for. And as I shared that story, I just shared with you about being adopted. As I shared that, I saw her fork drop and she turned around and looked. And the rest of the service, she was looking this way. And I tell this to these young people here, okay, that the thing in your life that you may not like is what God wants to use in your ministry. Because it's those broken things, the things we can't fix, that God can use to glorify himself through our lives. We was down at this Huttonville prison and uh, on Saturday night, I was back there shaking the guy's hands as they were leaving. And this one fella kind of tarried. He was a young fella, probably in his mid-20s. And uh, he just wanted to thank us for coming. He said, you know, I came here last night on Friday night. And he said, I came because some buddies told me that, that all you guys do is sing. And uh, anyhow, but he said, I just want to let you know, last night when I came here, you preached about um, David and Goliath. And he said, I had a really big giant in my life. He said, last night, Friday night, when I came here, I was a Satanist. And he said, I left the audience last night as a Christian. And I just thought I'd let you know that. <laughs> so anyhow, those are the kind of things that God allows us to be a part of. And it's mainly because of things that may be in our own life that we don't like being adopted and all of that, you know, uh, whatever, but God wants to use those things to glorify, because I have many inmates that say, wow, if that can't have happened to you, I think that could happen for me too. And it gives them hope and courage for the future. This song is one for the inmates. Dwight is 12, and he gets to go in about half, maybe a little more than half of our services. So he's got a song that talks about time. You know, inmates have a lot of time on their hands, and the song's called You Can't Stop Time. A ticket, ticket, tick, tock, ticking off time. You can stop. 
stop the clock, but you can't stop time. You can stop the cuckoo, you can stop the chimes. You can stop the clock, but you can't stop time. The tick a tick a tick tock, ticking off time. You can stop the clock, but you can't stop time. You can't stop the past that's already been. You can't stop the storm or raging wind. You can't stop the future, what's to be will be. You can't stop the river from rushing to the sea. You can't stop the sea from washing the sand. You can't stop God from loving man. You can't stop the twinkle or the stars in the sky. You can't stop the thought that we've all got to die. You can't stop the moon from shining above. You can't stop the mysteries made by love. You can't stop the world from going round and round. You can't stop the sun from coming up and going down. The tick a tick a tick tock ticking off time. You can stop the clock, but you can't stop time. You can stop the cuckoo, you can stop the chimes. Stop the clock, but you can't stop time. And take a tick a tick tock, ticking off time. You can stop the clock, but you can't stop time. Tick a tick a tick tock, ticking off time. You can stop the clock, but you can't stop time. You can stop the cuckoo, you can stop the chimes. You can stop the clock, but you can't stop time. Tick a tick a tick tock, ticking off time. You can stop the clock, but you can't stop time. You can stop the clock, but you can't stop time. Okay, we cannot stop time, can we? We can change the clock, but that doesn't stop time. We're going to have everybody come up here, do a family introduction, and do a song about marriage while they're coming. Um, I heard a, a sermon recently, a preacher was preaching about, he had just um, officiated at a wedding, and uh, this, this pastor always likes to have a cup of tea in the morning. And, uh, you know, this white fluffy bag that he drops into hot water and you have a nice beverage to drink. And as he looked down and, you know, everything was so pristine at this wedding and this little couple all in white and just everything was perfect, you know. And, you know, he thought, well, you know, after they say I do, these two little fluffy tea bags are going to get dropped into hot water. And what's on the inside is going to be revealed. And, you know, that's really kind of how marriage is, isn't it? Okay. And I'm sure if you could talk to my wife, there's been some things come out of my tea bag that haven't been so pleasant, okay? But uh, that is kind of life, and uh, we are glad for marriage. We were mar married back in 1981, and uh, we've had almost 35 good years, right? I mean, 35 will come up in August here. Our oldest son's Andrew, Christy. They have three children. They're back home. They're actually meeting us, uh, and they're going to do this tour, part of this tour with us. They traveled with us for many years, but uh, have not for about the last four or five. And so they're joining us down in Alabama. Uh, yeah, they have three children. Then uh, next is Donette. Donette is our secretary, bookkeeper, chief cook, bottle, whatever. Uh, she does it all, and what a blessing. The, uh, the prison ministry requires a lot of paperwork. You know, the government runs those institutions, and they're known for a lot of paperwork. So anyhow, she uh, gets in for a lot of that. All I do is sign my name to things, so what a blessing she is. Next is um, Anthony and his wife, Bethany, uh, and Tanya. I don't know if we can get a word out here. Can you say, do you want to say hello to the people? You do? Will you? Can you say hi? I guess not. Okay. Um, Tanya is two, and um, they have one in the oven, they call that. Okay. So about July. Why? Uh, 
and Bethany. Bethany comes from uh, Pennsylvania, and uh, it was Hearst. Now it's Glick. They live just uh, about two miles from us, and what a blessing to, to have them with us. If you saw our rig out here, they uh, have the, it's called the honeymoon suite, that little thing hooked on the back, okay? <laughs> so uh, that's where they'll be camping out here tonight. So next is, oh, we have son Dwayne that played banjo for many years. And uh, one day he set it down and Annette grabbed it and uh, she won't give it back to him. So uh, anyhow, he's married and lives right down the street from us, him and his wife, Holly. Then uh, it's Deanna. Um, Deanna's 25, right, Deanna? And uh, plays Dobro and, and uh, does a lot of cooking and cleaning and keeps busy around the house. Next is Arlen. Uh, Arlen is 23, just turned 23. Uh, he likes to run, so if you see somebody running tomorrow, don't worry. It's probably Arlen. Uh, he did two marathons this last summer, and so uh, he's making me feel gilly all the time. But uh, anyhow, he, he enjoys running. Next is uh, Annette, okay? Annette is 21, right? Wow. You were just a little girl a few days ago, it seems. She loves music and uh, just likes to play a lot of different things and is a delight. She has the top bunk in the bus and uh, we hope she doesn't roll out one day. It's a long ways down, but uh, what a blessing she is. Dale is next, Dale is 19. He is our, our onboard mechanic. He uh, turns wrenches, and, I mean, hour, an hour before we left, he was trying to finish up. He had swapped a, an engine in a Lincoln, okay? for his brother. I think we were doing that for your brother, right? In our garage there. So he, he does a lot of those things. And he's got to get his wrenches out tomorrow because on the way here, Anthony was driving. He drives faster than I do. And he, we threw one of the alternator belts off. So he's got to change that tomorrow before we head out. So Dale, that's your job for tomorrow. Uh, next is Dwight. Dwight is 12. And anything else I need to tell him about you? No. Okay. And my wife, Lynette, like I told you before, she's my first cousin, okay? I just read something recently in the archaeological Bible. It said that back in, in um, you know, Abraham and Isaac's day, it was very common for them. They married their first cousins. It was, I mean, uh, really, Rebecca was a first cousin of Isaac. So I guess, you know, the gene pool has got a little more polluted 2,000 years or 4,000 years later. But uh, anyhow... Um, this song reminds us that love is a treasure. A miracle of love performs them to grow into one. God helps us walk together on the path of life. Hand in hand and day by day as husband and as wife. The seasons and the times will change as we go. Song. Love is patient, love is gentle, love is kind, and love is true. Love's a treasure beyond measure. God is love, and I love you. Love is patient, love is gentle, love is kind, and love is true. Love's a treasure beyond measure. God is love, and I love you. Amen. Marriage is great, young people, okay? 
when you get the right one, right? Amen. I got a few quotes here I like to read. This one says, The real issue is not what happens to me so much as what happens in me. Isn't that the way life is? This is a good one. For every mile of road, there is two mile of ditch. You know, sometimes they say, you think people get off in the ditch a little bit theologically, whatever. There's two miles, for every two mile of road, there's two miles of ditch. This one's for the prisoners. God wants full custody, not just weekend visits, okay? Anyhow. This next song is a new one for us. Uh, actually, we had a, ju- a young man travel with us a few times and go in prison with us, and God gave him this song. He was working at a feed mill, and God just, st- these lines of a song started coming, and he ripped the tag off and started writing them down, and that evening he went home and put a tune to it, and just a wonderful song that reminds us of our blessed Savior. Blessed Savior came down from heaven above to give his life on Calvary, that by his blood all men might to him be reconciled and every sinner be set free. He paid it all, he paid it all for you and me, for you and me, by his shed blood, by his shed blood on Calvary, on Calvary. My soul was lost and bound for hell, the way of truth I could not tell, and I had nothing I could give. Then when I saw my soul was lost, God showed me Jesus on the cross and said to him, Thou shalt live. He paid it all, he paid it all, for you and me, for you and me, by his shed blood, by his shed blood, on Calvary, on Calvary, he is the way, he is the way, he is the he is the way, the truth, the life. Now I'm redeemed, praise God, and now the past, the truth, I try to walk with Him. Each passing day And soon I'll reach at peace for sure And be with Christ forevermore And shout that Jesus is the way He paid it all He paid it all For you and me For you and me By his shed blood By his shed blood On Calvary On Calvary He is the way He is the way He is the life He is the life He is the way The truth The life He paid it all He paid it all for you and me, for you and me, by his shed blood, by his shed blood, on Calvary, on Calvary, he is the way, he is the way, he is the life, he is the life, he is the way, the truth, the life, he is the way, the truth, the life. All right, Amen. You believe that here? All right, Amen. Does anyone have a testimony tonight? I'll give you a chance, okay? Got something burning on your heart and you just need to release, okay? We don't want you to blow up, okay? Just release, okay? Anyone here have a, have, God did something in your life this week and you need to tell somebody about it. Well, this next song we're going to sing talks about being free. And I have spoke to a lot of people behind iron bars that are so much freer than people outside of prison because they still got a lot of sin in their life. And just to be free on the inside, and that only is possible by what Jesus did on the cross for you and I, the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sin. And we have 
just had a real experience. Uh, I think when we were here two years ago, it was, it was a, a new program we were just starting. We work under the umbrella of a lot of other ministries that already have a presence in these prisons. And it's called A Journey to the Heart. And it's a week-long um, program. In fact, we'll be doing it in Florida here in uh, end of February, 1st of March. It's a week long, and we're in the prison about 10 hours a day. And it's more of a discipleship. Uh, there's a lot of people, chaplains tell me, you know, Mr. Glick, there's guys come in here and preach. So these guys have heard hundreds of messages on salvation. Give them some meat. Give them on some teaching on a deeper life. And, and, those, and so that's kind of what this program is. And it, we have just seen so many people get free from uh, generational sins, surrendered ground, and a lot of issues in their life that have been dragging them down. And they come to the end of themselves, and God delivers them and sets them free. And it has just been wonderful to see that. And maybe my wife could share. Um, my wife's a lovely wife, and God has given her a gift to help people pray through. And when they go, us men go in the men's prison, but the women go in the women's prisons. And uh, so we usually lead, uh, we have about 10 people on our team, uh, 10 inmates, and we work through this workbook on the different heart conditions, a carnal heart, a, what are the hearts, dear? You know, a hard heart, a bitter heart, an adulterous heart, and just all of these things. And prideful heart, yes. And uh, anyhow, so, but a lot of the ladies want to come to my wife. Um, they say, they'll say, well, go to Mrs. Glick and pr have her pray with you. And uh, so she's had the opportunity in the last few years to just help a lot of ladies to really come to freedom. Would you tell one story that you could uh, just give them a snapshot into your life? Thank you. I don't know for sure which one he wanted me to share, but I didn't know if I had do the one the one. Lord wants you to share. Okay. <laughs> well, um, about two years ago, yeah, it would be two years, I think, this month, um, a, a girl come to me and she said, as she was on our journey of going through all the hearts, all the wicked hearts, all the things that are inside that are hidden, she kept saying, I'll talk to you, but not yet, not yet, not yet. And finally on Wednesday, she says, Miss Glick, today's the day. I want to talk to you. She says, I was from a Christian home. And I decided to run away. Pretty soon I moved in with my boyfriend. And one night we got into an argument. And there was a gun and I took his life. She said, I've lied about it for eight years. And I went free. She said, every day I'd go to the grave and cry. I was so sorry for what I had done. I asked her if he had run out on her and she said he did. And so she took his life. As she prayed that day and asked the Lord to come in and forgive her, just to see the joy and the freedom of that sin. She said, I lied through all the courts. I've lied through everything. But I know I did it. So she prayed through. She asked the Lord to take back the ground that was given to Satan in her life because of the murder she committed and all the lies and the way she lived against her parents. Finally, she was free. She was so happy. She just glowed. The, all the ladies knew she was just completely changed. And in two days, her bunkie said, you know that God thing that's just all over you? I want it in my life. And she was able to get down at 11 at night and help her bunkie find peace with God, who was also a murderer. Since that time, God's allowed us to be able to correspond back and forth with letters. And letter after letter, she kept leading more and more people to the Lord. And the last letter I got, she said, Miss Glick, she said that every night, nine to 15 ladies pack into my cell, and I teach them what God shows me in his word that day. And she's been able to lead so many to the Lord. But as soon as she had repented, she went to the officer and asked if she could send a letter back to the family of the one that she had murdered. And she wanted forgiveness. And she was ready to repent all the way. It's been a privilege. It's been a joy. Boy, that was kind of ended kind of quick, yeah. 
Anyhow, what a blessing. It is just such so refreshing to see what the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, there's a lot of religions. Boy, we meet a lot of them where we go. There's, there's a lot of them. They got their prayer rugs and everything around there. There's a lot of religion, but it's only Christianity that can take a poor lost sinner and clean him up. I remember, well, Jerry remembers me. I was a bit of a rebel when I was young. And uh, I remember the thing that kept me from wanting to surrender was I knew I had a lot of restitutions to make. I stole something at a J.C. Penney's. Jerry, I don't know if you did. You ever know? You ever hear this story? I did. I went in there with one pair of pants on and came out with two. Okay, and I was just dared by another buddy that he said I did it and it works. Okay, so this was back before they have those little chips on it that you know puts an alarm off. So anyhow, I did it, and I knew when I went to the altar that night that I had to go back to J.C. Penney's, and. Uh, that was what the enemy just dangled in front of me and said, you, you got to go back to school teachers. You cheated on some tests. And, you know, my list was long, and I knew that. And that I, I just was fearful, and that kept me. But as I looked around, I didn't, I saw other of my cousins that were making shipwreck of their lives, and I didn't want that either. And it, it was a battle. And finally, when I surrendered to the Lord, I knew I had to work on this list. Oh, I hated that list, but I went back to that J.C. Penney, and God has a sense of humor. You know, I went in there, and I'm like, I don't want anybody to know what I did, so I'm going to just find a clerk and try to tell her, you know, I got some, I got an extra pair of pants here, um, and here, I, here's the money. Uh, I want to pay for them. Well, she didn't know what to do. She said, well, you'll have to go talk to my supervisor. Well, bottom line, I think I had to talk to six different people till I got... <laughs> got to the to the top dog there and I you know so I had to rehearse this sin over and over again you know and uh, I finally got to this big office it was the biggest office there I think and I told him what I did and he said you know he said it, you know he'd be glad to take my money but it's going to mess up my books he said but he I don't know if he said it this way but it was like he said go and sin no more and when I left J.C. Penney's I felt like I was three foot above the sidewalk. I was free. You know, that was behind me. The, the enemy could never bring that up. The biggest hindrance to prayer, to fervent prayer, is something in our conscience. It's bothering us. Because when we go to pray, the, the Holy Spirit will bring that. That's the biggest hindrance to a, a vital prayer life is something that needs made right. And it doesn't all happen there. You know, I got to I got to apologize to my children, you know, every once in a while, you know. I mean, we have to keep that current. But anyhow, that was the thing. And you know, I kind I kind of preach like this in prison, too. And I know there's guys sitting in those chairs that have they're there for one sin or one crime. But there's some that they didn't get caught for. And they got some heavy things to deal with. And they come up and say, well, Mr. Glick. You're saying that, that I have to go confess this? And I said, well, um, you go talk to the Holy Spirit. You, you let the Holy Spirit talk to you. You look in God's Word and you see. I said, it would be better to stay here 10 more years and make heaven your home than to sleep with a guilty conscience the rest of your lives. It's some tough things, but, you know, we need to give them the truth so they can really experience the freedom that we can find in Christ. The song's called I'm Free. You probably know the song. If you know it, you help us sing it. So long I search for Jesus, he made me complete. He forgot how foolish I 
tomorrow I'm free from the guilt of my past For I traded my shackles for a glorious song I'm free, praise the Lord, free at last Your destiny soon will be certain your debt must be paid with the price Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life Believe Him and have paradise I'm free from the fear of tomorrow I'm free from the guilt of my past Amen. And I thank God that one day that I could take that list. My mom had encouraged me. She knew I was a rascal. And she said, well, just make a list, you know. And um, you kind of kind of watch out for that because, you know, the enemy's there, too. And he tried to add things to the list, okay. And uh, you have to just be sensitive to God's the God. You know, the Holy Spirit, I, inmates ask me a lot of times, well, how do you know? I said, you know what? If, if, it is, if you have violated one of God's principles, the Holy Spirit will give you a specific way to clear it up. And if, if you can't clear it up, then maybe you don't owe an apology or whatever. Anyhow, but I thank God that one day I, got, I kept checking off that list, crossing those things and those names off. And finally one day I could take that list and throw it in the trash and... Uh, by God's grace. One thing the enemy didn't do, when before I was a Christian, before you're saved, you do not have the Holy Spirit in your life. And he kept saying, you can't do that, and kept dangling all those restitutions that I had to make in front of me. And I, I knew in my flesh I could not do that. But when I got saved, God gave me his spirit that I could Go into J.C. Penny and go and do whatever I needed to in his strength and in his power. And I thank God for that, that he will give us the strength and power to accomplish what he would have us to. You know, the scripture in Proverbs says that iron sharpens iron. You know, sometimes people, God put people in our life that kind of uh, work those rough edges off. And, you know, there's sometimes friction and we need the, the oil of the Holy Ghost to kind of keep you know, the sparks from flying and all of that. But uh, I got a quote here I read recently. It says, iron sharpens iron, marshmallows don't sharpen marshmallows, okay? God doesn't want us men to be marshmallows. He wants us to be men of iron. He wants us to have a backbone. And if we hang around a bunch of marshmallows, it won't sharpen us up. Annette's got a song that talks about what God would like of our lives, that our lives would be a vessel of honor. in your head. 
much disservice results would be nim if clay rejects potter and seeks its own will it could only be cast out to the old potter's field please don't cast me out master put me back on Thank you, Annette. We had the privilege this last uh, April, last April, March, April, to uh, go with Dr. Dan on a Tribe of Dan tour to Israel. That's uh, Jerry's brother. And what a wonderful time we had, but the best trip I think I've ever been on. And just had so many very meaningful times to to stand there on the Mount of Olives and whatever. And one of the really meaningful times was there in the Valley of Elah where David met Goliath. And uh, Dan left us alone for a while. And he said, you know, just go up there and find a quiet place and contemplate the giants that are in your life. And uh, we just had such a meaningful time there. And well, you know, while we're there, uh, I had to take a few stones back. Right here's a stone I got from the Valley of Elah. That I doubt whether David would have picked one that bad. That one fly too good. But uh, anyhow, and uh, you know I have a little grandson, Bryce, and he's six years old. And his favorite story is David and Goliath. So when I got home, I told him, "Now, Bryson, I got a little stone that I picked out of the same valley, the same brook that David got his stone." And I want to give it to you, but I want to put it in a little um, case, glass case, because uh, I think you'll maybe lose it if we don't protect it. And it took me a, a little while to finally find something to put in it. So finally the day came that I was going to present him with his little stone that came out of the same brook that David got his stone in. So I got it there, and, and I said, here is this stone that I got uh, where David got his that he slew the giant. And he kind of had this far away. I thought he'd be excited. And he kind of had this far away look. And finally he said, Grandpa, he said, I was hoping you'd get me the stone that he hit the giant with. <laughs> so anyhow, I don't know where that one's at. But we had a lovely time over in Israel. And if you ever get a chance to go, why well, I would encourage you to go to deepen your, your walk with God and just uh, deepen your, the scriptures as you go and experience that. But uh, this last song we're going to share uh, comes from a story in scripture. I like songs about scriptural events. And there was Mary and Martha and Lazarus. And, you know, they were very good friends of Jesus. And uh, I'm sure Lazarus was present many times when Jesus healed somebody. He'd see blind people go away seeing, lame people going away walking. And uh, there came a time when Lazarus was ill, and they sent for Jesus to come because they knew that Jesus could heal him. And we know that story that uh, Jesus didn't show up. And I wonder what's going through Lazarus' mind. I wonder if he thought, Lord, I thought you were a good friend of mine, and why aren't you coming? Maybe there's somebody here tonight and, you know, you're wondering where the Lord is in your, in your hour of need. Many times I've found out in my life God doesn't show up the way I expect Him to. Many times He has a different purpose 
and a different plan than what we have in mind. And I think this story and the song we'd like to share bear that out, bear that message that God has His purpose and God has His time. And on this side of the gates, we probably won't understand it many times. And that's where faith comes in, that we trust God in His time. And so I trust you'll be blessed by this song. It's called In His Time. Could we just bow for a few moments? It has been a privilege for us to be here. And if God has spoke to you, you know, I shared about those restitutions. Maybe there's somebody here tonight. And uh, as I shared that, the Holy Spirit reminded you of some unfinished business that you need to take care of. I urge you and encourage you to follow through in whatever the Lord would have. Or as we sang that last song, maybe... Um, you've been in a valley and looking for God and he's not showing up in the way you expect him to. And then you'd ask God for the faith to trust him in this dark hour of your life. I don't know what you're going through, but the Holy Spirit knows what the need is. Without, with heads bowed and eyes closed, if God has spoke to you about something here tonight and you're purposing to act upon that and whatever he's asking of you to do, 
with heads bowed, eyes closed, would you have the courage to just slip your hand up and have a prayer for you at the end here that you would follow through in whatever God's asking of you? Anybody here, we'd have the courage to say, yeah, God has spoke to me about something and I'm going to follow through with what he's asked. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for this evening, for each one here. Lord, you know life is not easy many times, but you say you'll give us the grace and you'll give us the strength and you'll be with us. And we thank you for that, Lord. Lord, each one here, Lord, you don't just see hands, but you see hearts. And we ask you to minister to each one here tonight with that need. Bless this church, Lord, those that come in and out of these doors, that they would go forth with your freedom and your joy and your purpose to make a difference in the community around about here. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, we're going to turn the time over to the pastor, but we want to just thank you all for coming out. It's been a joy for us to be here. We have a table set up. There's some prayer cards there. If you would pick one up and remember us in prayer, especially the next one month, we'll be on the road. A lot of intense time, and we need God's people praying. So if you could do that, we would really count that a privilege. God bless you, and thank you.